The People's Democratic Party in Edo State has called on the international community and the European Union to put eyes and ears on the other gubernatorial election to hold this Saturday, September the 21st. The party has raised alarm over applause to demystify the office of the governor by redeploying of the total withdrawal of the governor's security apparatus on the day of election. The PDP also raised concerns over alleged plots to cause chaos and mayhem on the election day, adding that some chieftains of the APC have brought in mercenaries to rig elections in the riverine communities of the state. The party, however, called on President Bola Tinumbu to do the needful by ensuring a free and fair election. We have also uncovered plans to deploy, to redeploy all the security officials attached to His Excellency Governor Paseki in order to leave him without protection and render him vulnerable as we head into the election as well as on election day. This is a very dangerous thing and we got this information from very close to the highest officer in the Nigerian police. And we take it very, very seriously. And um, we know what their plans are. Cause as much distraction, as much disorder in our state because the polls, independent polls coming in day in, day out, is suggesting that they would lose so badly that the only way for them to have if, get anything out of this election is by causing mayhem and chaos. But as a responsible party and a responsible government, we will not allow that to happen. And Edo people have been very, very cooperative because they understand what's at stake. Either they want to go back or they want to move forward. This is the path to prosperity, and PDP is offering that path. Meanwhile, responding to the allegations, the Director of Publicity, Edo APC Governorship Campaign Council, Orobusa Omojo, said the PDP and its governorship candidate, Asue Gudalo, and Governor Obaseki are suffering from horrific hallucinations. That in the past two weeks, Godwin Governor, uh, 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 Governor Godwin Obaseki, the PDP, and Igudalo have been exhibiting dangerous symptoms of hallucination. Also, in the just concluded governorship debate organized by media stakeholders in the state, candidates of the APC and the PDP were conspicuously absent. Joining us now on the morning show for a comprehensive analysis on the upcoming election this weekend is Austin Aibe, election observer and member West African Democracy Solidarity Network. He's joined by Ibrahima, publisher, editor-in-chief of Niger Times and chairman, Niger Times Journalism Foundation. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us on the morning show. Good morning. Good morning and thank you for having Okay, me. let me just start by asking a general question, which is your reading of developments in your state. Both of you are from Edo State. And what you think the prospects are for the elections coming up this uh, Saturday? There's been a lot. Signing of peace accord, which PDP boycotted. Debate, which PDP and APC boycotted. Uh, the role of Oshiamole the role of other persons, but what the uh, public is interested in, it seems to me, will be what kind of situation are we likely to be faced with on Saturday? And what will be the implications in terms of the interest of the Edo people, whose interest has been largely discounted in this whole saga in your state? Let me start with you. You are in, here with us in the studio in Lagos, A. E. Braimer. Okay, thank you, Dr. Abati, and um, thank you, Ayo. Thank you, Rufai, and all our viewers. Um, on Saturday, Edo people will come out to vote, definitely. And uh, how the tension in Edo State will suppress, you know, voter turnout is still for us to, um, you know, exp to look forward to. Having said that, the elections will be too very, very close from my reading of what is going on in Edo State. Uh, but it boils down to two political gladiators, basically. 
Oshomole on the one hand, in APC, and Obaseke on the other. I think it's like a, a clash of egos. And they are not on the ballot. They are not on the ballot, interestingly, but they are dominating the issues. And I must say, too, that uh, most of the rhetoric has been very, very dangerous and uh, unconscionable, if you know what I mean. Edo people deserve better. You know, the, uh, it, originally, what the plan was, when Oshomole, you know, when it was APC governor, the plan was to move on to uh, Obaseki as governor, and then from there to move on to Aswe Godalo as governor, before what happened, happened. Um, when, of course, they, they fell out, that's Obaseki and Oshomole, you know, and how Obaseki made that dramatic comeback to become governor, you know, at the very last minute, uh, from APC to PDP, you know, that created its own problems within PDP. And um, that problem is still dirty today, which is why you will notice that most of the politicians that were, with, that were in PDP, let me put it that way, the legacy members, most of them have now moved over to um, APC for reasons that uh, we can discuss. You know, um, just last Saturday here, the former senator, Francis Ali McKenna, you know, of Edo North. He was there before Shomoli came. He just declared last weekend for APC. The same thing with uh, Ogbe Dehama, you know, who stepped down for Baseki four years ago. So I think the, the Edo people are also watching. What they want out of this is the governor that will serve, meet their, you know, needs and serve their purpose. And um, but overheating the system will not help us. But I think if you look at why PDP didn't sign the peace accord, I think they have some valid points there, if you ask me. I just checked before I came today. Um, INEC is still saying that um, they will not remove uh, the REC, you know, the Resident Electoral Commission, who is now known to be a cousin of Wiki. And we know the relationship between Wiki and, very frosty relationship between Wiki and uh, Obaseki. You know, and indeed, all the problems, political bag, whatever you want to call it today, that Obaseki has, most of them were created by Shwaibu, his erstwhile well, uh, deputy, or for, former political ally, so to speak, you know, because the courts returned him as deputy governor. But having said that, I think politicians, at the end of the day, it's all about their individual interests. You know, so if they're moving from party A to party B, or party B to party A, it's about politics, their interests, either individual or group interest. It's all about repositioning themselves, you know, for uh, what they believe will serve their best interests. Okay, Austin Aigbe, let me come to you. Your reading of the Edo tea leaves ahead of this Saturday gubernatorial uh, thank election. You. Thank you again, and I appreciate the team, uh, and thanks to my brother who, are, who went ahead of me. Edo election will come and go peacefully. What you hear today are the normal political conversation, whether it was in Kogi, whether it was Edo 2016, whether it was Edo 2020, all of this sentiment is being mopped together to weigh some supporters to see that we are, we are seen now as an orphan. Uh, usually, opposition party in the state will always make those kind of uh, messages. We wait for Ondo. You are going to see that also coming from the opposition in Ondo. But sincerely, a do election is, like uh, my brother has said, is for me an ax to grind between the Ikuben governor and the former governor who made him, who made the Ikuben governor governor some eight years ago. It's on record that Adam Toshomole had to do a lot of things beyond our physical eyes to ensure that Obaseki became governor in 2016. Midway to 2022, to 2020 of the election, we saw what happened with the removal of Adam Soshomole as national chair, and then the fire up that eventually went into narrative and politics. And that influenced the 2020 election because the same Oshomole has been consistent in all the campaign grounds since, I don't want to talk about his own election in 2007, but the election after him, it was the one who spoke in 2016, apparently the one who spoke in 2020, and is also the one speaking now. It's clear that it is time 
to end this war for individuals like Senator Shomole is either it happened now or never. Apparently, the same notion he had in 2020, because the party was in power at the national level, and Ogbodun Obaseki had been removed from the ballot of the party to contest the election on behalf of the party, and eventually it went to the PDP. I would think, even though the PDP does have everything by way of information, as presented by Honorable Chris, my very good friend, not signing the accord sent a different narrative, sent a different notion entirely. It means that it's, it, it, the, oppos your, the opposition party can easily tell you that you are afraid that you want to lose the election, that is one. Two, because you want to embark in violent negotiation, that is two. That is why you have come out and you are not signing. I know that the peace accord is a moral, moral document. It has no force of law. But morals is very critical to perception. I would expect that the party would have signed openly and made the comment so clear that we are signing for peace sake, but this, this, this need to be addressed. Otherwise, the election forthcoming cannot be guaranteed by way of free, fair, and credibility. I want to further add that if ANEC remove the reg today, and the police IG remove the CP today, and they bring somebody else they don't also like, will they call for the removal? And once that happens, you are going to see, beginning from a due election, an hurricane of calls for removal of people who opposition don't like. Again, these are sentiment, these are political permutation. And one has to be very careful in the way we support the removal or because I know people talked about being weak cousin. Right. I have said on this show before right. that the ANEC rec have the minimal role to play in okay. elections. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I mean, thank you so much for pointing out the peace accord and what that symbolizes. But we call that when um, Matthew Kuka, Father Father Matthew Kuka had come out to say that the president himself didn't sign the peace accord and he did go on to win the elections and he's currently president. So um, maybe in, in that regard, sometimes when people have reasons, it just might not demonstrate that this is the path they want to follow. So just to point that out, that the same APC who are making noise about or who are saying that PDP didn't sign, they didn't sign, even though he was represented. I'll come to you. Let me, let me speak to Mr. Brimer. I want you to talk, you, you mentioned just two candidates. Are you neglecting the impact of the Labour Party candidates, Mr. Olumide Akpata? Are you saying that he is not um, part of the three, uh, three finalists, if I could put it that way, strongest candidates in this particular race? What do you think his impact in this race would be on breaking that monopoly between the PDP and the APC? I mean, at the end of the day, people will choose who they'd like to vote. And then for uh, Mr. Aigbe, I'd like you to talk about this thing about federal might and potential interference by the federal, even though at different quarters they've come out to deny saying that the president is a Democrat, he wouldn't interfere. But are there genuine concerns around that? And what should be done to mitigate those um, concerns? Mr. Brimer first, and then Mr. Igbe. OK, thank you. Uh, I don't know. I'm not discounting um, Olumide Akbata. I think as far as I'm concerned, he's done a very creative um, campaign. Uh, and I said so in a recent piece I wrote. He has done very well. but. It, breath of fresh um, air, you know, into the, what I call, political communication in Edo State. And indeed, it's also a force, especially in Edo South, you know, where we have seven local governments. Edo State has 18 local governments, 192 wards. And in all of those seven local governments, I see him very strong in three of them, you know. Uh, but he has done very well going to all the other uh, local government areas in Edo State. But historically, you will agree with me that the dominant parties, you know, um, are still PDP and APC. But that is not to say, and then don't forget, all the, all the parties have problems, including the Liberal Party. How that will also play out, we wait to see. Talking about um, chances, yes, in Ledo South, I agree that Olomide, don't forget that the governor himself is from Ledo South. The, uh, running mate to Aswe Gudalo is also from Edo South. So I see them more like also some kind of battleground, okay. you know, zone. If you go to Edo Central, 
where the PDP candidate and the um, APC candidate you know, are from, it's also more or less also another battleground state. Okay? Now, Edo North, uh, Edo Center has five local governments, and um, they will split it, basically, they will. Uh, then if you go to Edo North, where they have six local governments, uh, that is where you have the dominance of um, Senator Adams or Shemal, who is the former governor. And he has a lot of his, you know, associates with him there, from the Minister of the Niger Delta, uh, Abubakar Momo, the, the immediate past Minister of Budget and National Planning, uh, is also from that region. Uh, you also have uh, Shwaibu, um, Philip, from there, the Senator, who was in PDP before, you know, the previous season before Adams took over from him as an APC senator. So they are all there. So all the ESACO, the three local government area, whether it's central or south or east, they will all go to, as far as I'm concerned, PDP, APC has the upper hand there. But where the speaker is from, which is Owen West, blessing Agwebaku, I'm sure obviously PDP. So I have done the analysis before I came to the permutation. I think it will be very, very close between APC and PDP without you know, discounting the impact. But for um, Olubide Akwada, I think it would have been an easier run for PDP in Edo South. So that is going to eat into the votes of PDP, basically because of the impact uh, Olubide Akwada has, you know, made, uh, because it's from that region. Don't forget and, that Edo um, went to labor in the presidential elections, so don't underestimate it. A lot it. has happened oh, between then and now. A okay, lot of, well, fair a enough. Lot of, a lot of changes have occurred. Thank fair you. Fair enough. Yes. Mr. Igbe, your take on um, the concerns around federal might, are there concerns around that and what should be done? So b before I do that, let me quickly just make a comment that we should not take his lordship Father Koka, Bishop Koka comment out of contest. President Buhari now, uh, who was a candidate of the party, was not present at the signing of court. I was there. The party chair was present. The vice presidential candidate at that time was present. They both signed the document. It is different that Aswan Godalo, the, the candidate of the party, was present. And my also good friend, the chairman of the party, uh, was also present. And the strategy for them was not to sign, but be present, which is a different strategy compared to this one. Back to federal mind. It does exist in, I mean, since 1999, there's always uh, the, uh, the, the, the forces, because if you check, our security architecture of today, um, the federal mind controls virtually all the security architecture. The Electoral Act empowers the police as the lead agency for election security. Today, in Edo, and as in elsewhere, whether it's in Ondo or in the Southeast, usually the non-state actor security architecture are suspended ahead of elections. So the Edo's own has been suspended. There's a lot of commentary about that. that sent a signal that this gubernatorial elections are supposed to be a federal election. They are not state elections. What I mean is this. The states conduct local government administration elections, while INEC, which is seen as a federal agency, conducts both the national election and the sub-national election. You are going to expect that come in. You can say that in the last Three elections that we have had, we have had Imo, um, Kogi, even though there were a lot of commentaries that are not very nice to talk about those elections. But you also had Bayesa, and the PDP won in Bayesa. In, in fact, in each of the states, all the AQ band literally won. Uh, the next question would be did the federal might not work in Bayesa? Maybe your guess is as good as mine. And we have seen consistently where oppositions states wins their positions. Adam Soshomale was in opposition in 2011 as ACN governor and won the election that returned him by, to, 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 to government house. And we've seen that consistently. Maybe people can also argue. In 2020, when Obaseki moved to the PDP, he was automatically in opposition from the federal government. And he won the election, unless there are conversations that in 2020 in a dual election, that the federal government did work for the APC, and that was why um, Obaseki returned to government house. But I would say no. 
election went on, the police performed their duty, the DSS, even though there were some argument that um, some party in power, some party members in, uh, at, the, uh, at the state were arrested uh, by authorities of federal men. And these individuals supposedly were belongs to party in power. I'm talking about 2020. The same conversation now is back in 2020, 2024, arrest of the opposition. And we are now talking about federal might. So there will always be federal might. He who controls the paper, they say, the tone. But I'm not saying that the police, I, I want to give it to the police. They made their commentaries. It is for voters, voters, to hold these uh, uh, promises and hold them to account that me, we are in the era, we are in the digital world right now. That whatever thing happening in any corner of this world, it immediately gets traction okay. online. So the police, I'm sure, want to be careful not to play to the okay. wings and campuses of this okay. Gen Z world. Okay. I, I think that Mr. in this Mr. election, federal might may not have its way. Uh, Mr. Igwe, uh, as regards that last minute, I'd like to disagree with you, and I'll give you why. In fact, you said federal might has existed in 1999. No. Federal might has existed since the first time we had federal elections in 59, the 12th of December 1959. The federal might then was handled by the British. And we all know what that happened. We all know what they said about Izato, that it was going to be one political party plus whoever could get a majority. That's why whatever NCNC and Awolowo did, it was a coalition government already with MPC. Truth has to be said. You said federal might will not play a role. He played a role in Kogi. We saw what happened in Kogi. We saw the shenanigan that happened, the quantum wickedness and destruction that happened in Kogi with recourse to nothing. And the PDP, are you saying they are not valid for expressing their concerns that this will be cavalierly taken away from them with, you know, this federal might? And why must we have it in a democratic government and we pamper it? The second question I want to ask you is the flagrant disrespect for debates and political engagement by the top candidates. Is that debate doesn't even play any role in our polity in this country? Those are the two questions for you. After you answer, coming to you, sir. Based on your permutation, I'll give you the time to answer, sir. Based on your permutation, it's going to be a fight to finish in the central. But the central is also a low voting block compared to the south. Do you see a probable influence of Ulumide Apata? Being the only candidate from the South, do you think it's a strategic thing to be able to take, you know, that part of Edo? Because it is the South that brings most of the vote. The Central brings a marginal amount of vote. And even the North, we have seen in further election cycles that Oshomola used to say as a great ground. is no longer a great ground. Anyway, let me correct myself. Maybe because then you had the deputy governor then, uh, Philip Shoaibu being called to the Basseki, that's why they could damage the influence of Oshomali. Now that Philip Shoaibu is back with Oshomali, maybe they can deliver the North. Let's look at all of those political permutations. I'm sure you got the question correctly. But let me go to Mr. Igbe first to answer his own part of it. Thank you, Doc. I, I didn't want to go down historical memory lane. That's why I focus on the Fourth Republic. You are right. There's always been the federal might in every election. In fact, in a local election, there's a state might. That's why you have, in all the state local elections, the party at the end of affairs of the state determines all of the course of action. I mean, that's, that's given. I agree with you about Kogi and, of course, Imbo. And I make that commentary very clear that there are a lot of reservations. But I am saying, in 2020 election in Edo, there was a federal might. And Edo people voted for the choice they preferred, and it was the governor of Baseki. I am saying, it may have changed, we can say, because it was Muhammad Buhari at that time, that is now uh, Tinibu, uh, uh, Ahmed Tinibu, that there, that there could be a different scenario. All of those are permutation, and you can take it to the market to say, well, um, Bola Tinibu may, may really not want to do anything, or he may want to enforce something. I believe, with all due respect, that if the president wants to enforce anything, uh, it, may, it may already be in line. But if it comes out very glaring, like it did in 2020, if you recall in 2020, the now president of Nigeria went public 
to ask that a dope people should vote for APC and that they should sack Obaseki. That message alone annoyed the peoples of Edo South, major, 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 uh, majorly in Edo South. That how come you tell us who to vote for? And that was where the slogan about Edo not be Lagos came from. Today, it is not that Edo not be Lagos, it is now federal might. I am saying federal might is a norm. It's a norm. But you need the people to vote. Bring all the forces of hell to a, a people who are determined I, I, to vote and stay with their vote. But, they will protect I, their vote. I, 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 part of that federal might, is it not the conundrum of the person that is close to Wiki that is still there? And you said so, you said REC do not affect the election. No. If you call in, uh, yes. what's his name now, no, I, uh, a former, you know, uh, REC that normally comes on this show, you know, that gave us a lot of insight, you will see how wreck, and he told the story of how election officials affect the election, how they have to prosecute a couple of these professors, I think in, in somewhere around Cross River, quite bomb, because of the role they play. If you say wreck don't affect the election, look at the case of Abia. If not for that prof lady professor that stood firm, they will not get the mandate, the Labour Party. It was that woman that stood firm despite the pressure that said she's not going to succumb to pressure. So wreck affects election. So is that not part of federal mind? Now everybody is crying that it's not a balanced game. They should change that person close to Wiki. Um, can I butt in here? Yeah, please, butt in. Please, so the question I'm talking I'm about federal mind before I talk about it, the chances, you know. Please, um, just hang on a minute. You will respond to this. Uh, yeah. the, we can't rule out federal might. What my own reading of the situation is... APC wanted those states at all costs, all right? And now it becomes an ego thing for uh, Senator Adams of Shemole because of what happened in the past. So because he lost basically to Shemole for, um, Obaseki four years ago. And if that were to happen a second time, it will re reduce significantly his political influence in uh, those states. Because right now, he's the new Mr. Fix-It of politics in uh, those states, as it were you know, under the platform of APC. So I am very uncomfortable with the fact that a cousin of the federal, uh, Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Wiki, um, Jason Wiki, will be the resident electoral commissioner. And then more, secondly, and this is why um, PDP refused to sign that piece of court. The other allegation on the table is that the newly appointed commissioner of police is from Okrika in River State, and a former classmate of... Um, a wiki, where we need to fact check this. So when you have, and then thirdly, some political um, associates, those that they, they believe are very influential in uh, those states, like the chairman of my local council, Esa West, local government area, Colin Saigugu, he's been no, he's not been found for a very long time. I hear he's in Abuja somewhere, calling his feet. So there's no way you cannot speculate or even suggest that the federal might will play an important role in this election with all of these facts on the table. So having said that, coming to um, the numbers and how it will play out, yes, Edo South has a large voting block. In actual fact, more than two times, uh, more than double what you have in Edo North and uh, Edo, Edo, Edo Central. Central, yes. So if you put Edo Central, um, those that now have their PVCs, because about 2.2, I mean, according to INEC figures, uh, uh, registered to vote. But I think oh, slightly over 1.7 million have collected their PVCs. About 483,000 haven't picked up their PVCs as, as we speak. So if we're to look at those numbers, yes, Edo South has the, the advantage. But having said that, the governor is from Edo South, Obaseke, Gordon Obaseke. The deputy, um, the, the secretary, the SSG, until he left office to now you know, campaign as um, running mate of uh, Asue Gudalo, is from Edo South as well. So I think those that is also going to play a very important role because he's also um, a noted uh, political strategy in Edosa. I agree with you, but for Olumide Akpata, the Labour Party you know, uh, governorship candidate, it would have been a smooth run for PDP in Edo South. So how far he will you know, impact you know, the votes of PDP in that region is left to be seen. But I did say that in three local government areas, it's going to be very strong. So those states, those local government areas are also battleground states. And those central, which is my own zone, basically, is also going to be split down the middle. Chief from uh, Ikimi is from Igwebe local government area, all right? 
the local government area where uh, Aswe is from, is from Ewohimi. Ewohimi. Yes, and I think that is uh, Edo South. I mean, so Esa, I can check that. That is uh, Esa. That's in Setra. Uh, yes, Ewohimi is from Esa Southeast, while Mondo Kweolo is from Esa Central. So you can be sure that all of those votes are going to also go down the middle. So battleground will be Edo Central, obviously, and, 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 and South. And, and, and the South. North, if you look at Edo North, it's likely to sway more towards APC because of the political juggernaut. Because of that, uh, that, that uh, yeah. Oshomole. But Akoko uh, Edo and Owan West, it's likely to go to PDP. You know, because, because, of, the because, because the of the deputy governor. The deputy governor is one. The speaker is from... Um, all one West, the blessing Agwebako is from All one West. Okay. It's in PDP. Let me call, just now, Igwe, quickly finish your point. You, you were trying to make a counter rebuttal as regards uh, the fact that you think Federal is not going to play a role in this. Can you make that point quickly before Dr. Bati comes to ask you a question? So, Doc, very quick, Doc, very quickly, very quickly, thank you very much for the opportunity, very quickly. In Edo of 2020, the Rec, who was from Bayesa at that time, had contested an election under APC. And the PDP also raised the same flag. That individual contested, uh, con conducted the election. I use the word very firmly when I say REC really performed little or nothing. The REC, if, if you are telling me about national commissioners, I will agree with you. If you are telling me about police, um, national police, I will agree with you. Because the REC, it is the information apparently that it has at its disposal. Who appoints? The, 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 the state attorney officer, the national, and all of the um, ad hoc officials, the national. If you put a body on just the wreck, if you remove that wreck today, and you bring another wreck in, if there's a perception that it will not deliver good, we are going to be asking for its removal. That's, a, that's a my point. Okay. I am gentlemen. saying that gentlemen. we have had an election in a gentlemen. Where a wreck. Who... We have limited time. Both of you are from a do state. You have been following politics in Nigeria for quite a while. Do you feel individually, personally, embarrassed that the state where you come from, because you people will come here, we'll meet you in Lagos, you'll be doing like this. We'll meet you in Abuja, you'll be doing like this. Do you feel embarrassed that Edo State, where you come from, there's no seriousness in the politics in that state? Everything is about ego. If you people are not talking about some people don't have DSTV, you are talking about uh, Ushiomole calling somebody barren, you are talking about uh, uh, Aswe Igudalo uh, suing uh, Ushiomole for defamation and all that. Do you feel personally embarrassed that Edo State, you know, is not showing a good example in terms of politics? Doctor, Honest opinion. Dr. Abati, I beg to disagree with you. Okay, um, what example are you people yes, showing? The, Even one of your candidates cannot come on TV to speak the, English. It's the nature of politics. Okay. And uh, you can't blame them. Whether it is going to, even the next election in Ondo State, it will not be different. In Kogi, it wasn't different. So, Edo people are very enlightened people. You know, we are very discerning. We have very brilliant minds. Um, it is true, because of politics, people will say all kinds of things. I mean, you don't expect people to take the gentleman saying that uh, people don't have data or they don't have uh, DSTV. That is just a very pedestrian talk. You know, that is by the way. The candidates have offered themselves to Edo people. I think next Saturday, let Edo people, voters, make up their mind who they want. External influences, to the best of my knowledge, can become counterproductive, as it, did, as it happened four years ago. When it was the, the, the song then was Edo Nobi Lagos. And we all know how that came about, as my brother you know, just um, uh, mentioned. Edo people want a governor that will give them good roots, that will give, create job opportunities. Flooding now is a big problem. For the past two, three days, it's been raining heavily in Edo, a lot of homes are flooded. I think when um, Akin Femi was here, we we're talking about uh, the funds for ecological, 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 funds. ecological funds that have been mismanaged. Flood is a major problem. It's an existential danger and threat to Nigerians, especially in the Edo state. So they want the economy to be full. They want security, you know, guaranteed. So these are the issues. And of course, there's too much hardship currently, as we all, I mean, there's enough evidence, not only in the Edo state, everywhere. So all the different factors are going to come into play. I think the candidates we have um, have gone around the state. 
Let a double make up their minds who they believe can deliver the goods for them on Saturday. Okay, Austin Aigwe, do you feel embarrassed that the do people are not doing enough to put their house in order before you come to Lagos and you'll be carrying shoulders? You know, the, there's a common thing in those state that they don't know they carry last. But this time, with, I mean, my brother has said he disagree with you. Let me follow the part of his disagreement. But sincerely, it is worrisome, going by the question that um, Dr. Rufai asked earlier about debate, that our national architecture does not have the legal framework yeah. to call these individuals to speak media-wise, not on the ground during campaigns where they promise air conditioners on the street, on the ground where critical issues of development are brought to the fore. That is the next trajectory of the Nigerian state. It's a Nigerian problem, sir. It's a Nigerian problem. And though it's just a manifestation of it now, we may see that again as, in, uh, as the election go forward to 2027. There need to be a framework that candidates are voted by way of popular opinion poll that, I mean, Arise usually do, uh, does that. Get this candidate together. I would uh, advise. Whether two or three or four candidates you are, I don't care, but there can be a poll between today and tomorrow. Who do you want to see on the debate? Let Arise do it, and let's organize it. Let's see the one that don't come. It has an effect on even the voting choice. It is important we get this thing. Let them talk. We are not talking about, um, because some, there are conversations about when the commentary is made by a candidate, uh, people say it is twisted, it's fake news. But when you speak to the media, it cannot be fake news. And it, I think it's important we do that. I am not ashamed because virtually all the governors in this country, you can only be point, even Oga, in your own state, we can also have a challenge. Educated individuals who are not also performing in many other states as well. But I think that, like uh, uh, my brother has said, Just solve quiet. the greater <laughs> needs of the people. <laughs> Re address the boss challenge of development, and the people will be happy for it. Okay. And above all, Okay. Make the on people that note, happy. On, on that note, thank you very much, Austin Aibe. Thank you, Ibrahima, who is with us here in Lagos.